Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to set up RetroArch on your cheap Android TV box. Now this is the T95Z Plus. Before we get started, most of these Chinese Android boxes do not work with USB controllers. They lack the configuration files in the Android system to recognize USB controllers. I am using a Madcat CTRLR controller. It has worked on every Android box that I've tested. It comes with a USB dongle and it just automatically detects it. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to an Amazon website. You can get one of these off of there. But that's what I'm using in this tutorial. So if you have a problem, you need a controller that is compatible with these Android boxes. And the next thing you need to know is I will not give out links to ROMs. I just don't do it. But I can tell you, if you go to EMU Paradise, you can find everything you'll ever need. You're going to need some ROMs, obviously. The way I do it is I download them on my PC. I load them up on an SD card or a USB drive and insert them into the Android box. But since we have a browser built in, you can always download them directly to the box itself. Let's go to the Android Play Store or Google Play. We're going to need to get two apps here. First one is going to be ES File Explorer, and then we're going to need RetroArch. So I'll get ES File Explorer. Install. And we're also going to grab RetroArch. Just let everything download and install. We'll get started here in just a second. So first thing, I'm just going to show you where I have my ROMs. I'm going to open up ES File Explorer. And I transferred them to my internal storage. So I'll go to Downloads. I have a Genesis folder, an NES folder, and an SNES folder. I've also put one of each just in the Downloads directory. Because when we download RetroArch and start it up, it will detect what system each one of these goes to. Let's start RetroArch. Now when we go into RetroArch, our mouse is not going to work. That's why we need the Madcat CTRLR controller. Works perfectly fine in here. We're going to navigate over to the little icon down below here. I'm using my controller, but I'm pointing with my mouse to show you. We want to go to Driver. Enter the Driver menu. Find Menu Driver. It's set to GLUI, but we want XMB. We'll go back. We'll go to the Home section. And we'll scroll down to Save Current Config. So we save the config. We're going to exit RetroArch. Now we can relaunch RetroArch. It's going to look a lot different. As you can see, it looks very different. It looks a lot better to me. So we now need to download the cores or the emulators. Scroll down to Online Updater. From here we have a lot of options. There's Core Updater, Thumbnails Updater, Update Core Info Files, Update Assets, Update Auto Config Profiles, Cheats, Database, Overlays, GLSL Shaders. Let's update the database. It's going to extract. We're also going to update the assets. And we're going to update auto config profiles. Now it's time to download some emulators. And when I say emulators in this video, I'm talking about cores. So go to core updater. From here, you can choose what core you would like. But I'm going to show you what I use. Now on these little Chinese Android boxes, I don't mess around with N64 or Dreamcast. This will play PlayStation 1, NES, Virtual Boy, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. The lower end consoles, it will play perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is just scroll through here. And in this video, I'm just going to do Sega Genesis, NES, and SNES. So here's NES. There are a few cores per 
emulator. I like to use Quick NES, so we'll download this one. We'll scroll down. Super Nintendo. I always use SNES 9X. Now we need to find Sega Genesis. This will be under Sega MS, GG, MD, or CD. Genesis plus GX is what I use. Now I always save my current config after everything I do, just to be safe. So now that we have our cores installed, I want to change the background of this because it does have a little bit of a memory leak on these Android boxes. As you can see, the bar in the background that's been waving has slowed down dramatically. We're going to go to Menu. I'm going to scroll down until I see Menu Shader Pipeline. Ribbon. And I'm going to turn it off. You can change the color if you'd like to. I'm going to go with Legacy Red. Always save your config. Now let's scan our ROM directory so we can play some games. We'll go to Scan Directory. Internal Memory, and this is because mine are in my Downloads folder. Scroll down until we see Download, or wherever you put your games at. So I could scan the parent directory, which will scan the whole downloads folder, or I can go to each one of these and scan them individually. I'm going to scan this directory, which will be the full downloads directory. And if you see at the bottom there in yellow, it's detected three games, and it's ready for me. Mega Man, Kirby Superstar. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'm going to go back and scan each one of these directories individually. My Genesis scan directory. There's four games inside of here. NES scan this directory. There's two games in here. And SNES scan this directory. There's 15 games in here. Now the scanning process is going to take a long time if you have hundreds of ROMs, but it should finish up. You just need to leave it alone and let it finish. So now we need to turn off the on-screen controls because this is not true Android TV. This is stock Android just like on your tablet. It's going to display on-screen controls when we start a game, and we don't want that. Settings on-screen overlay, display overlay off, auto load, and turn all those off. So go back, make sure you save your current config. So now that we've turned off the on-screen display, let's go to input, menu toggle gamepad combo. Now, when I'm playing a game, if I press L3 and R3, which are my two analog sticks, if I press them down, it will bring me back into RetroArch. That's exactly what I want to do. Save config. And it's time to start playing some games. Let's go to Joe and Mac. Run. So these older emulators work amazing on these little Android boxes. They don't need that much power to run, and most of these boxes will work fine if you have something with an S805 Amlogic CPU or an S905. It'll work perfectly with these kind of games. Now, if you're using uh, the Amlogic S912, PlayStation 1 works very well also. But you will not be able to play 
in 64 games at full speed. Now, sure, there's some games that will work flawlessly, but most of the games will not. Dreamcast is pretty much out of the question also, but you still have thousands and thousands of games that you can play on your cheap Android TV box. I'll go back to the menu by pressing in my two analog sticks. I'm going to close this game. So that's it, guys. You now have awesome retro emulators running on your cheap Android TV box. You can change the look and feel of RetroArch if you'd like to. I will leave links to RetroArch documentation down below. Go ahead and read through it. If you're looking to play Game Boy Advanced, Neo Geo, FBA, PlayStation 1, you will need BIOSes. Check the website I told you to check on Google. It's EMU Paradise. They have everything you will ever need. Now, if you want box art, you can go to Online Updater, Thumbnail Updater, and choose the corresponding emulator you want box art for. So if I wanted box art for Super Nintendo, I would download it through here. It does take a little while, especially on these Android boxes. For some reason, it does take longer to download and extract. But if I hit download, as you see at the bottom, it'll start downloading the zip, and it will extract it for us when it's done. After you restart RetroArch, your box art will show up beside the game. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try my hardest to get back to you. All links are down below, so check everything out. Like always, thanks for watching.